Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. The garden is blooming. We have spring popping out everywhere. And as you can see, I've collected a beautiful bouquet of some of these gorgeous yellow and red tulips. I've got a, a broad assortment of daffodils and narcissus. And I've even got tucked down here, I don't think you can see them very well, but I've got these beautiful grape hyacinths, these beautiful um, sort of navy blue grape hyacinths. So I'm very excited to paint these with you today. It's really hard to keep up with everything that's happening in the garden right now. It's just, you know, the weather has warmed up. We've had plenty of rain. The sun is shining and it's exploding. So um, these won't be lasting very long. So I thought I'd better get busy and paint these. Now, as you may know, there are some new colors that have recently been announced in the water-based inks. And among them are something called Lemon Lolly, which is a very cool pale yellow. And I have something called As Azure Afternoon, which is a kind of a deep, rich, kind of a, a Mediterranean blue. It's what you would expect to see in the sky in Greece. And, uh, and I, I wanted a bright yeah, uh, red, so I just grabbed some Poppy Parade. And then I also have my old standbys in case these don't do what I want them to do, but I think they're gonna be all right. I haven't used them yet, so we're gonna be doing this together. So what I've done is I've taken my palette and I've just cleaned off one end of it so that I could put these particular colors down. And this is the Lemon Lolly. And you don't need a lot. I'm just putting about uh, three or four drops of ink. And then I've got my Azure Afternoon. Whoa, that came out fast. And a couple of drops of the Poppy Parade. So that's just, that's going to give me my, my three primaries, my yellow, my red, and blue, and that's all you need. Um, it doesn't, I don't believe it helps to add a lot of different colors because what you want is your colors to be able to harmonize with one another. So simple is best. And I've got a little piece of paper here. Now let me just check my settings, make sure that we are broadcasting. And yes, that looks good. I'm Leslie Watkins, and I'm here today to help you make something beautiful. I see Ginger, good morning Ginger, she says beautiful flowers. Ginger, you must, and Ginger's tuning in from California, you must have a lot of things going on in the gardening world where, where you live. So um, my idea is to do a long kind of a slimline shaped card. So this measures three and a half by eight and a half, but I've cut off about an eighth of an inch on both sides so that I could have a nice border around the edges. But I just wanted to have a kind of a long flowing bouquet going across the top of the page here. Now I also have somewhere, I have a little scrap of paper and I just want to do a quick experiment. I want to see how these colors mix. So I'm going to begin with a little bit of the blue and Here's my blue, beautiful color blue. And then I'm going to add some yellow at the other end and see what that gives me. So there's a nice 
uh, what I would call a nice bright spring green. So I think that'll work just fine. There we go. Then I want to try the same thing with the red. Now the Poppy Parade is a very warm red. You can see it's almost like a tomato red. And that's what I was looking for with these tulips, though I think maybe a cooler red would have been work just as well. But let's just check that. That looks pretty good. So I'm getting a, a nice bright prism here of color. Now let's just check how the, the red and the blue do together. That gets a little muddy. So the red, so this red and that blue, they're too warm. So they're not going to give me a nice, vibrant violet like a, um, a cooler mixture would do. So, um, so I'll have to be mindful of that as I work. I'll just do this on the other side to keep it in the theme. It does give me a beautiful, nice dark though, which will be very helpful. All right, so that is, those are my mixtures. So that gives me an idea of where these things are going to go. Now I'm not going to talk too much today because I'm just gonna quickly paint because I, I wanna just uh, concentrate on this. And if you'd like to learn more about watercolor painting or as we're doing today, painting with ink, please go to dandelioncottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes. And when you do, you'll also get a free video with an introduction to, um, to painting with ink. And so you'll get that for free when you click through the link. So just look for Notes, N-O-T-E-S, from Dandelion Cottage. And that will put you on my list so I can let you know about all the upcoming watercolor and card paper card making classes paper crafting and card making classes <laughs> all right so let's get started i'm just going to put this aside for the minute and i'm going to just um do a quick sketch with my brush i'm just going to mix up a um just a neutral tone And I'm going to bring my flowers back so I can see them a little bit better. And I definitely, definitely want to get these tulips. So let's, let me just give you a close-up of that tulip. Aren't they gorgeous? They almost don't look real. They're so beautiful. All right, well that's going to be my, I think that'll be my star performer in the composition. And I'm just checking to see who else is here. Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Vicki. And Ginger says her garden seemed to explode overnight. Yes, same here. Going to have lots to paint soon. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about this whole season of painting with everybody because, as you know, in the Watercolor Card Club, We've been doing some um, prep work to get ready for the season. And now that it's here, we're going to have a lot of subject matter, matter to paint from. So I'm going to um, just, as I said, I'm just going to sketch very lightly. And I know you're not going to be, be able to see this very well. Because uh, for one thing, it's it's my sort of my shorthand, so it's not going to make a lot of sense to you, but it's also going to be very, very light, just so that I can see where everything's going to be placed. 
these big, beautiful, creamy white daffodils are really extraordinary. They all are. I mean, it's just, it's impossible to, to pick one. They're just all exquisite. And some of these Narcissus are actually very fragrant as well as, a, as an added bonus. getting everything placed on my paper so I can see where the edges are. I don't know if my friend Jan is watching, but years ago when she and I were in art school at the Art Students League of New York on 57th Street. We, for a short period of time, shared a studio that was, if I remember correctly, it was on 40, I can't remember if it was East, I'm sorry, not East, it was either West 47th or West 45th Street. Jan, if you're, if you're out there, Tell me where that studio was. Anyways, it was a gorgeous studio. It was this, this enormous, cavernous, kind of old warehouse building. And there were some very famous artists there at the time. And um, we decided we were going to paint tulips one day. <laughs> so we, we, we bought some beautiful bouquets of tulips and set up the, the still life in the studio to paint from. And they were um, in this big, big vase and the light was all gorgeous. And we started painting and as we continued to paint, the tulips kept opening and moving to face the light. And, um, and so every, every couple of minutes, the, um, the the arrangement would be completely different. I don't think I did very well. If I remember correctly, I think Jan did a very pretty painting. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to zoom you in real quick so you can get an idea of what I just did. So as you can see, just very pale indication of, of some of the movement in the composition. Bring it back out a little bit. All right, and then I'm just going to um, start adding some color. So this is the Lemon Lolly. And you can see it's a very pale, kind of a cool, yellow, which is really perfect for these daffodils. I'm just going to splash some of that around. I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. And this is this is just the same way that I would begin any um, any sketch in my sketchbook. So if you're following along with the watercolor sketchbook, this is this is just how I would do. And by the way, um, there is also 
a registration open right now for beginning watercolor sketching and you will learn more about that when you subscribe to notes so don't forget to subscribe to notes because that registration is going to be closing very soon and I go into much more detail there about your setup the different tools that you can use how to get started and um, and some basic art techniques so it, it's perfect for beginners, particularly if you're somebody who um, is interested in painting with either ink or watercolor, the water-based inks. And those, of course, are the inks that we use to replenish the stamp pads with. They work really beautifully. I'm going to need a little bit of a um, green tone for the inside of some of these flowers and for the stems. So I can just see some of these stems kind of peeking through. What's your favorite new color? Has everybody had a chance to um, play with them at all? I've done a little bit. I, I am absolutely loving, loving the new in colors. Those are the ones that are sort of the earth tone colors. So I'm very excited about those and I'm looking forward to using them quite a bit over the next two years. Those are the colors that will stay active for two years before they retire. So that's really exciting. And then um, these other colors, like the ones that I'm using today, the Lemon Lolly and the Azure Blue, these are new core colors. So they're going to be sticking around for a while. I did order a pack of the retiring So Saffron paper because I really love that color. That's the very pale, warm yellow. And, um, and for me, that's kind of a irreplaceable color. So I wanted to make sure I had a stock of that to hand, which, you know, if, if you do take a look at all the colors and see what's retiring, you may want to stock up on some of the ones that are going away. So um, one, another one might be the soft suede, which is a gorgeous color. What, um, what colors are you going to miss the most? Ah, uh -huh. that's, that's the good question. I'm going to have to go with the so saffron. And then the number two would be the um, soft suede. And I just, I just like the soft suede because um, when you wanted to stamp a sentiment but you didn't want it to be as dark as black, say, the soft suede was a, was a wonderful alternative to the black or, or early espresso. And, um, but now we have the pecan pie and the pebbled path, which are both beautiful neutral colors which will work very well for that purpose too. So 
but I'm just looking at these uh, tulips and the design on their petals that these stripes are making and just kind of um, getting those sketched in. Over here I've got a beautiful daffodil and these daffodils have these wonderful ruffles on their trumpets which are just exquisite. So I'm just going to indicate a little bit of that sort of uh, ruffled effect. Keeping that color moving. And for the for these white petals, I'm just using a very soft kind of a, a neutral mixture. Um, it's a kind of a greenish viol gray violet, if that makes any sense. Just picking out a few of the, the ruffles. Give them that, that beautiful quality that they have. And we've got this big daffodil in here. I don't want to forget my beautiful blue here. Um, I'm going to have to dip into a slightly different tone of blue for, for this particular flower. So I'm just grabbing something, some old ink that's on my palette here and just see if we can get that started. Add another one over here. The grape muscari is such a beautiful plant to have in, in the garden. It's relatively inexpensive. You can get a lot of these bulbs for, for just a few, few dollars. And they keep coming back year after year. It's a, it's a wonderful investment for the garden. And they just look so nice with these other colors. All right, so now I'm going to tighten up my drawing a little bit. So I'm going to get a um, slightly darker neutral tone on my brush and just pay a little more attention to some of these details so it starts to make a little more sense pick out some of these petals. I'm not, I'm not painting every single thing. I'm not copying what's in front of me. I just want to get an impression.
having a little bit of a background. So you really don't need to spend a lot of money on a lot of different things to get started. For this, I'm just using those three inks. They're just a couple of dollars each. I've got my water painter, which is the brush that comes in a pack of three. So they're very inexpensive, a little bit of water some paper and you are good to go. If you're interested in um, in the beginning watercolor sketching class, you also have the option to get a beginner's kit. So if you don't have anything don't worry, I'll get you started on the right foot. And in that kit, we'll, you'll have everything that you need to follow along with the, with the lesson. And you can keep these things as loose and sketchy as you like. Okay, the, the degree of finish is entirely up to you. Since this is just a, a quick video, I'm going to keep this one very loose with just um, kind of an explosion of color here on the page as I develop it. And I'm going to um, later, probably not today, but hopefully before these flowers pass, I'm going to do a more careful study in my watercolor sketchbook. But for now, I just want to have some fun with these new colors and, and just take them for a spin, see what they can do. I'm going to put a couple more drops of yellow on my palette. So the yellow so the um, Poppy Parade is a much stronger color than the, the Lemon Lolly. So I'm adding a, a few more drops of that so that I can get these beautiful tulips. So I am very pleased with this um, Lemon Lolly. I think this is going to be a, a really fun color to paint with. It looks like it's going to make some very nice green mixtures. And that's always a plus. Let me see if I can get a, a darker green now. I'm just now I'm adding more, more blue, more yellow to get a, a darker green. See how that looks. A little bit back here.
Now inside these tulips are these beautiful six dark anthers. So I can just get those indicated. And let's pick out some of these petals over here. Okay, so that's how I would get started. Now, I will continue working on this for a little bit longer. Not too much, but I don't want to keep you too long. So I just want to show you the next thing that I'm going to do. So once the, once the picture is finished, I have a Knight of Navy folded cardstock. Now this does measure um, eight and a half by three and a half. And I'm going to mount that on there like so. So it has a really pretty little border. And then on the inside I would put my piece of, of white paper for an area to write my message. But I've also got my Quiet Meadow stamp set because it has this adorable tiny little tag die that looks like this and this this little uh, love sentiment so I'm going to stamp that on there and then I'm going to tie my tag onto the Front of the card so that's just this beautiful little springtime bouquet so I will post the finished picture in the thumbnail thank you so much for watching let me know what your favorite colors are and be sure to subscribe to notes from from dandelion cottage so that you can be notified of all of the upcoming watercolor and painting with ink classes so stay well, stay happy, stay creative. Let me know what you've got in your garden, what's blooming. And I will see you again on Saturday for Paper Crafting Saturday.